Hey everyone, I'm Chantel. Thank you for tuning in. Tonight we are going to learn more about genetics and DNA. Tune in every Wednesday at 6 p.m. and I'll have different STEM lessons for you. The three things that we are going to cover are cells and chromosomes, building the backbone of DNA, and how we can use DNA evidence to solve crimes. Johann Frederick Meischer discovered DNA. Today we have it easy. If there's an experimental solution that we want to pull, all we have to do is put it in our freezer. Your body is made of 100 trillion cells. If we lay them all out in a straight line, they would stretch out for 4 million kilometers and wrap 100 times around the world. Did you know that the egg cell is actually the largest human cell and at one tenth of a millimeter in size, it's barely visible to the human eye? A skin cell on your earlobe lives for one month. One on your belly a little over two weeks, yet other cells just live four days. And when you scrape your knee, you might lose several million cells in one fell swoop and a few drops of blood. They too will be immediately replaced by other blood cells which divide and divide and divide. Now let's take a look inside a cell. Notice the seven sections in the diagram of an animal cell. Gregor Mendel is known as the father of genetics. Human cells have 46 chromosomes. According to the rules of Gregor Mendel, all the programs for features are doubled in each cell. When examining chromosomes due to their characteristics and shape, they are called X and Y chromosomes. Boys have one X and one Y chromosome. Girls have two X chromosomes. And now for building the backbone of DNA. Here is a generic example of DNA. So we have all different structures here. In order to build the backbone of DNA, we first must decode the structure of DNA. In 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick presented um, their interpretation of the structure of the genetic material. Now let's look at this DNA model that we have here at this station and let's build it together. First, I'm gonna lay all the pieces on the table. The way we're starting out this position is very much like how researchers were doing in the 1950s. They too experimented with models like we're doing right now. The long curved black pieces represent something called phosphoric acid. These two individual components form a basic framework in which phosphoric acid and sugar alternate. Tiny sugars are the building blocks for the white sugar crystals that we use when we bake things. In this case, it is a very specific sugar building block. And basically, we're just going to assemble the black components to create two equally long strands. And then we use the five corner pieces um, and connect them with there's a hole. This provides a place to attach more building blocks, as you will see. So for learning purposes, the red pieces are out of nine, the green are thymine, the blue are guanine, and the yellow are cytosine. These are the four DNA bases, and chemically they are always paired the same, red to green and blue to yellow. Watson and Crick were able to figure out the helix structure by studying pictures from other scientists, including Maurice Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin's x-rays of DNA. In 1953, Watson figured out how adenine bases and thymine, as well as guanine and cytosine, could be connected with hydrogen bridges. So as you can see, I'm attaching the color base pieces onto the two black sugar phosphoric acid strands in such a way that each color base fits precisely with the one across from it. The red base must match up with the green base and the blue base must match up with the yellow base. Now I'm connecting all the color elements together. The result will look like a spiral staircase called a helix structure. And there you have it. Voila! We just completed the DNA model. And now last thing for tonight, we can use DNA evidence such as fingerprints, blood, and saliva to solve crimes. When witnesses are unable to identify a suspect by their face because maybe they're wearing a mask or by their voice, fingerprints can help. Lab techs take drops of blood, cigarette butts, lint, hair, or saliva and study those isolated DNA samples to solve the case. Thank you for tuning in to Genetics and DNA. 
I hope that you enjoyed this video. Be sure to click like, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell so you can be aware of the next time we upload. I'll see you next time for Heredity and Treats. Thanks. Thank you.